Welcome back to the Home Lab and I've got an interesting little piece of apparatus to show you today. As you know, I'm one of these people who likes rooting through the cupboards of the physics department and quite often in the back of very dusty cupboards that haven't been opened for a long time, there's apparatus that everyone has forgotten about. So, here's an item. It's a little bottle with a ground stopper uh, that sticks out at the top. What do you think this is and what do you think it's used for? Did you manage to work out what this little thing is or do you recognise it? Um, this is a density bottle and it's used to measure the density of liquids. And if you remember, density is mass divided by volume. So if you know the volume very, very accurately, then all you have to do is work out the mass on scales of the liquid you're dealing with, divide the mass by the volume, and you've got the density. So uh, these flasks are a very, very uh, precise volume. Now, I'm not going to go into the real details of how you use these uh, super precisely and super accurately, uh, but we will do an experiment to show you how you would use them generally in a school laboratory. Now, just a reminder about density. Density is how much mass is crammed into a certain volume. So, which is heavier? A ton of feathers or a ton of lead? Well, it's both the same, they're both a tonne, but I used to say to my students that I could probably carry a tonne of lead in the back of my Land Rover, probably wouldn't do it any good, but it wouldn't be very large at all because it's very dense, the mass is crammed into a small volume. Whereas a tonne of feathers is a very low density and I'd probably need three or four articulated lorries to carry all the feathers because the mass is very spread out. As an experiment, I thought what we'd do is we'd look at the density of two different liquids. And um, I was flying the other day and I thought, I've got exactly the thing to show you. So in here, slightly blue tinge, I've got some 100LL aviation fuel. And um, I won't explain why now, I'll do that a little bit later. What I'm going to do is add some water. And watch what happens. It's all a bit bubbly to begin with. But once it settles down, do you see you get this rather interesting situation where you get the aviation fuel on top and the water below. Now we know that that must happen because the more dense material will go to the bottom and the less dense to the top. And the more dense is the water and the less dense is the aviation fuel. Um, if this was a little bit newer, it'd be really blue. It seems to lose its blue tint after a while. Anyway, they're completely immiscible liquids and uh, they're not going to mix at all, but this is a real issue for aviation. So I'm going to discuss with you in a minute why this is a problem when we fly, but why it's great news that these two don't mix, and then we'll use our little density bottle to measure the density of the two and see how different they are. Before we fly light aircraft, in fact, before we even start the engine, we take a sample of fuel from all the lowest points in the fuel system. So that's the bottom of both tanks on the left and the right wing, and also below the engine, below the carburetor, where there's a little bowl, a filter bowl. And as you saw in the jar that I held up, the water goes to the bottom. So if we go to the lowest point in the fuel system, any water in the fuel system will appear at the bottom. So we take our little strainer, uh, we strain out some fuel and we look at it and we hope that we see a slightly blue tinted uh, 100 LL aviation fuel. If there's any water in it, the water will go to the bottom of the, the strain tester and you'll see little globules of water, or even worse, you might see a layer of water. This is extremely dangerous because can you imagine you're on your takeoff run and um, suddenly the engine sucks fuel and in fact gets an amount of water into the carburetor. Well, your engine's probably going to cough or stop, uh, which is extremely dangerous. Even worse, if you're just airborne, it's enough to stop the engine. So you must make sure that there is no water in the fuel system. And luckily for us, 100 LL aviation fuel and water are not miscible. They don't mix together, so they separate. So we can see this difference between the two and hopefully no water at all. But also, 
they have different densities, as you know, and the water is more dense than the aviation fuel. So that always goes to the bottom or the lowest point. I think it'd be really difficult to drain off the water if it ended up at the top of the tanks. I'm not quite sure how you do that. So what we're going to do now is use our little density bottle to see if we can see what the difference is between 100 LL aviation fuel and normal water. So let's do an experiment and see if we can measure density with this little density bottle. Now, it's meant to be done at 20 degrees C and you're meant to put these in a water bath and have all your chemicals and liquids all at the same temperature. Um, you're also meant to put a known liquid in here, one that has a known density, and then you can calibrate the bottle because if you know the density and you know the mass, then you can work out the exact volume of the container. But uh, to keep things simple here, what we're going to do is say, well, it says 50 uh, milliliters on this, so 50 centimeters cubed. So we know the volume. So all we need to do is work out the mass of the liquid in this. And what we'll do is weigh the bottle, find its mass when it's empty and take that off the mass of the bottle with the liquid. Or in fact, what we can do is put the empty bottle on the scales and then just zero the scales. And if we add liquid to the bottle, then we know what mass that liquid is. Finally, this little bit on top here, this is really clever. If you fill it to the brim with the liquid that you're trying to find the density of, this stopper has a little capillary tube in it all the way down, so it doesn't seal it. And when you press it in, it squirts liquid out of the top you dry the top and you dry the outside of the bottle, and then this is calibrated to being exactly 50 centimeters cubed. So the first thing we'll do is we'll find the mass of the little density bottle, just in case we can't zero the scales later on or it resets. So that's on zero. We'll put the density bottle right on the middle of the scales, and we've got 23.11 grams, so 23 grams to the nearest gram. So what we're going to do now is take the little stopper out of the density bottle and fill it with the blue 100 LL aviation fuel. So here we go with a bit of aviation fuel and any of you have flown light aircraft or even been near them, uh, it's a smell you never forget. It just has a very particular smell, the fuel. It's actually quite a nice smell, though you shouldn't really uh, be uh, smelling it all of the time, but you can't get away with it when you're filling the aircraft. So I, it's pretty tricky stuff to pour this, so I'm going to use the syringe to put it in. And then once we filled the bottle, we'll put the little stopper in and make sure we've got a very precise volume in the bottle. A few more drops. There we go. So the next thing we've got to do is put in our little stopper and let the fuel go right the way up the capillary tube and leak out and then we're going to dry the bottle and we've got a very precise amount of fluid in the container. So here we go, put a glove on for this because I don't want this stuff all over my hands. Uh, we don't tend to use gloves fueling the aircraft but we don't get the stuff all over us. So in goes the stopper and you'll spot it leak and did you see it spraying out the top there? So what we've got to do now is dry the bottle and then when we drive the bottle all the way around like that, I should have put two gloves on, shouldn't I? Okay, now really the fuel should be right at the top of the capillary tube. It's not quite, but that will do. And now what we'll do is we'll put it on the scales and see what mass of fuel we've got. So as expected, the scales have zeroed themselves whilst I was talking. So let's put the bottle and the fuel on the scales. And we get 59.70 grams. So what we'll do is we'll take the mass of the flask off that value. And we've now got the mass of the fuel in the flask. And we've also got the volume of the flask. So we can work out the density of the 100 LL aviation fuel. So we've got the mass of the flask and the 100 LL aviation fuel is 59.70 grams. The mass of the flask on its own as 23.11. So taking those two away, the mass of the fuel in here is 36.59 grams. Now, if we divide that mass by the volume of the flask, 
50 centimeters cubed, we get 0.73 grams per centimeter cubed. So uh, that density compares very well with a textbook value, which is about 0.7 grams per centimetre cubed, or about 730 kilograms per tonne. And we need to know that figure because we then know how heavy the aircraft is going to be and it allows us to do our weight and balance calculations before we take off. So with my room absolutely reeking of aviation fuel, let's now quickly do the density of the water. So we've got our flask, fill it to the brim with water, and before we do this we normally dry the flask completely and blow them out with compressed air. I've sort of done the best I can. Um, I haven't got it brilliantly dried out and clean from the aviation fuel. But anyway, you can see what we're going to do. So uh, look out for the jet that's going to come out the top of the capillary tube to give us our precise volume. There it is. OK, give it a bit of a dry. And uh, there's quite a few bubbles in here, which I think is left over from the uh, from the aviation fuel, but um, again, I'm just showing you how it's done. Let's not worry too much about a really accurate answer. So onto the scales, which is the flask and the water, and we've got 74.00 grams. So now let's quickly work out what the density is of the water. So the mass of our flask and the water was 74.00 grams. And in fact, um, it stayed at that value uh, on the scales whilst I was doing um, some other bits of calculation. With the aviation fuel, it didn't quite, it dropped because that was evaporating. So we're seeing a slight reduction. Uh, we've got the mass of the flask is 23.11 grams. Take those two away and we get 50.89 grams. And that mass, 50.89, divided by the volume gives us the density. So 50.89 divided by 50.00, uh, being a bit over precise here, a few too many significant figures, gives us 1.02 grams per centimetre cubed for our water, which sounds absolutely right. Or that is a thousand kilograms per metre cubed or a tonne per metre cubed. So the water is quite a bit more dense than the aviation fuel, which is why it sinks to the bottom of the tanks. And it's probably water rather like this um, deionized distilled water because it's condensation that's formed in the tanks when it's parked in the hangar overnight. So I do hope you enjoyed that video on the density bottle, a lovely little piece of apparatus that's somewhat forgotten and still really easy for children to use to measure densities of liquids in schools. Also, that you learnt a little bit about why we drain fuel from aircraft before starting the engines and the good luck that the water, which we don't want, the contaminant, is more dense so that sinks to the lowest part in the fuel system. Anyway, my lab at the moment, the home lab, absolutely reeks of aviation fuel. So I'm going to have to stop now and open the windows um, so I can breathe in here. But I'll be making another video soon. So I look forward to you joining me then.